Okay, hi. I wanted to make a video regarding my new SRAM RED ETAP setup. And uh, just going to go over a few things, some issues I had with it, uh, overall performance, and things of that nature. So here we go. So a few years ago when I got this bike, I didn't want to buy the DI2 setup due to the price. I knew I wanted to get the bike because I like the bike and uh, so I figured I'd just put a mechanical set on it. Well, mechanical was fine, it worked okay, but just the odd way the cables ran through this particular frame and out the back was really, didn't give me great shifting, it was okay and it worked. And uh, you know, I, know DI, I knew DI2 was coming, but th for the cost at the time I didn't want to spend the money on it, it was a little unproven, so I figured I'd wait. Well, a couple years after that, DI2 is obviously a great setup, a lot of guys love it, it's been proven in the field and uh, I was really going to get it, set it up for this bike and then I read about the ETAP that was going to come out so I figured I'd wait because the wireless to me sounded like the best way to go no wires at all, how do you beat wireless? so waited and waited and finally and now it's June 2016 I was able to get my hands on an upgrade kit so I figured I'd really overhaul a lot of the drivetrain system. I bought a brand new SRAM Red crank set, compact crank, new COGS, 1128 COGS. I do a lot of climbing, so I figured I wanted the 28. And uh, SRAM said that the ETAP will accommodate up to 28 COGS, so I went for it. It's great. Installed everything after I tore the bike down. The paddle shifting on it's just great learning how to do the paddles from left to right and both of them at once to move the front shifter really is a no-brainer took me two blocks to learn the system and get used to it I mean a shift it's like second nature it's really no big deal uh, setup was easy mostly bolting well, obviously bolting the front and rear derailers on or took me less than a minute even setting up the height and you know adjustment on the front derailleur was you know a minute or two at best and it was ready to roll. Uh, the way they've thought out this system is just great. Shifting is, uh, you know, once I got through my issues and set everything up and got it to trim right, shifting on it is just amazing. Super clean, crisp, every gear, super smooth. Uh, yeah, I can't say enough about it. Heads and shoulders above any mechanical system by far. I've never owned a DI2 system. I've ridden a couple of them. I've checked it out. It's great. But to me, this wireless system, you know, is just amazing. Probably number one on number one in the market, you know, by far. Uh, you know, DI2 has its pluses. I'm not going to go into the plus and minuses and compare them both. Uh, you know, just going over this particular system itself so things I had issues with which they don't really tell you in the manual and there's some other stuff that they don't really tell you there's no troubleshooting in the manual that I could find uh, it's just basic install it set it up and you should be good to go well I didn't find it to be that simple uh, you know maybe it had due to my inexperience with it you know you watch the videos on YouTube of the bike shops that have set it up and maybe they've set up you know a bunch of them before maybe they have experience with it I don't know I didn't find it to be that simple. Maybe it's user error, probably user error, but you know, I've been building my own bikes for the last 20, 30 years. I never buy a full complete bike really. I always build my bikes from the ground up, but the only thing I don't do is press in the bottom bracket bearings. Uh, other than that, I've built dozens of bikes from the ground up. I've repaired people's bikes. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what else to say. You know, I'm not, I'm not some schmuck that just goes to Best Buy and gets a bike and I'm good to go. I you know I've built race bikes and mountain bikes and gravel bikes, so you know I, I'm experienced to say the least. So getting to it, I've installed both the derailers, paired everything. Uh, I had to had to basically you know straighten out the rear derailleur hanger. Uh, I found that it, mine was probably a little bent. I don't know how it got bent, but uh, straightened it out to where I got it to where I needed it. You know, I followed the instructions. I set the cage to the biggest cog 
set the B-tension screw, uh, but then I ran into a problem. It wouldn't trim. I couldn't get the trim. It wouldn't trim outboard because it was touching the spokes. So at that point, I'm like, well, the, what am I supposed to do? I'm hitting the function button. I'm hitting the right paddle to get it to go outboard, and it wasn't not moving. I needed, I needed at least a quarter inch, so I needed to move it a bunch. Messed with it for a while, wouldn't work, couldn't get it to go outboard. It would shift. I could shift from the biggest cog to the smallest cog. Uh, it would go and shift both ways, but obviously with the chain was rubbing and skipping and here and there. So it definitely needed to be fine-tuned. Couldn't get it to go either which way. Even on the left paddle, when I hit the function button and, and shifted it, it wouldn't go either way. I'm like, well, why is it not trimming? You watch the videos on YouTube, and the guy says, oh, you just press the button, hold it, and you shift, and it'll go each way, no problem. And he was done in like a minute. Well, I didn't find it to be that simple. It wouldn't work. I don't know why. So basically what I came to realize is that why messing with the function buttons and trying to pair the front and rear derailers is that somehow it came out of pairing. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense or not, but I figured even though I could shift the front and the back derailers, it wasn't micro adjusting. I don't know why. It had something to do with the pairing. So after repairing it two or three times, uh, that had to have been the issue because I was able to then trim it as needed. And now, as you can see, it's, you know, it's perfectly aligned. Uh, every gear goes in, shifts perfectly. I don't know how more I can say how well this thing shifts. The, the shifts are clean and crisp. It goes into every gear exactly as ordered. You know, uh, I've read the DDI2 shifts faster. I mean, I'm not a pro. I'm not racing. The shifts seem to be fast enough for me, definitely faster than my old mechanical set. You know, as far as that goes, I'm, you know, I'm loving the improvement of the basic mechanical set to this set. So, uh, for me, that's, you know, amazing. I also had an issue with my chain length and my B tension screw. I don't know if it's this particular frame setup, my Lightspeed C1R, uh, it's very, it's an aero bike and it has bad cross chaining. If I'm in the big cog to the big ring, which I know most people are going to be like, well, you're not supposed to do that. Well, I know, and I usually don't, but you're supposed to be able to at least get it into those gears. And when I do that, the chain is massively cross chained. And then with the B tension screw, as they said, when you have about six millimeters between the, the top of the teeth to the top of the biggest cog or to the, to the teeth of the biggest cog, uh, it just wouldn't shift right. It didn't like it. So I basically found I needed a little more space between those two wheels. And basically I am about eight, eight centimeter, eight, you know, an eight millimeter uh, Allen wrench between the two seemed to be the perfect uh, setup for this particular bike. So, you know, I, that's my setup. I'd say if, you know, you're doing your own, follow the instructions or what everybody says to do, you know, take it as, take it with, you know, take it as you think you need it. So... After I sized my chain properly, got the tension right on the B screw, uh, I got a, you know, I got all new stuff. I put a new, rebuilt my hub on my Mavic wheels, got new cogs, brand new hollow pin SRAM chain, uh, got my nice carbon SRAM red 22 cranks. Set up the front derailleur. Uh, it shifts so well. You know, the paddles are great. I can't uh, say enough about how much I really love these paddles. Uh, I like how thin they are. They're a lot smaller than your average average old school um, shifters. I set the, uh, easy to set the adjustment, the reach on it. There's a little bolt right there that sets the re reach. You know, everything is smooth. Hitting the paddles is easy, I like how big the paddles are. The only thing I did not like is on like on my SRAM gravel with has a force setup, you can you can pull the paddles towards the bar and hold them in your hand as you're sprinting so you don't have to reach out. These do not have that feature. They don't tell you that. These are fixed. The paddle doesn't move away from the brake lever. Uh, so that's just an FYI. 
if you think you're going to get it and uh, it's going to be like your other SRAM stuff, your Force. I think Red also does that as well. These do not do that. So that being said, you know, to me that's pretty minor setback. Uh, I love the paddles, love the shifters. It's obviously setting up the brake, new brake cables. And this, the ETAP set comes with new SRAM brake, you know, in black brake cables and housings. That took a minute to set up. Uh, set up over, you know, once you figure it out and you get the pairing done on it, if you get it right and you do the pairing right, it's going to work pretty well for you. Uh, like I said before, my my rear derailleur hanger was tweaked. I don't know how it got tweaked. It seemed to work perfect with my mechanical set. This, I think this has like a yaw setup so it, you know, every gear is frying the front doesn't have like an auto trim feature so it doesn't rub like a di2 setup but the yaw technology that they're using for i think both front and back derailers there's no need for that and i found that to be true i can go on the big ring and the big cog in the back to the small cog to the small cog in front and i don't get any rubbing on the front derailleur whichever kind of combination i set up or choose to ride on so just awesome just awesome and uh, everything is so smooth and it works so well it shifts so good you know the other functionality they built into it where there's a there's a function button here where you can just press it so when you're tuning stuff you don't need to worry about having to shift on the front paddles you can do it right here on the fly uh, same with the rear you can just press the little function button and it'll shift you know accordingly so that way you were trying to, you know, mess with stuff. You don't need four hands to try to tune something like you would a mechanical setup or maybe DI2. I don't know exactly how it works. But uh, another thing I did like that I learned as I was trying to tune it is as you're on the fly riding the bike, if your chain starts to rub, you can hit the function button and the paddles as you're riding and it'll tune it accordingly depending on if you choose the left paddle to the right paddle it'll move the derailleur inboard or outboard so pretty cool pretty smart setup uh SRAM definitely did their uh, homework and testing on this thing because it's just great uh, as far as the batteries go you can interchange the batteries it's simple uh, you know I haven't had a long-term test with it yet you know I've only had it a couple days and I've put about 50 60 miles on this particular group set so you know, it's going to take some some real world testing from me to see how much I think it's really worth the money that this thing cost. Yeah, it's obviously not cheap. Uh, you know, I'm going to use it and I'm going to abuse it and I'm going to get it dirty and wet and see how it holds up. You know, uh, I don't I don't baby my stuff, but I do take care of my stuff. I clean it and I oil everything as needed. I I uh, you know respect it and 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 take care of it as needed that way you know never have a rusty chain or any bad cogs or any of that stuff so i always torque my stuff down with a torque wrench so that being said you know uh if you're thinking about getting this system and you uh even if you have a di2 you know if you have mechanical and you want to go either di2 or this setup <laughs> hands down this setup is going to be uh this setup is going to be just awesome I don't, I, you know, I'd be, I'd be shocked if any pro or amateur or anybody in between would have any kind of qualm with this setup. Uh, you know, I don't know if you're going to do long rides and you're going cross country or going from state to state. Maybe the batteries won't last you that long. You'd have to maybe buy a couple backup batteries and have them pre-charged and take them with you so you could, uh, so you could, you know, go the long distance. I don't know, even... You know, the, the indicators tell you how much time you're going to have left. I think these batteries are supposed to last 60, 600 hours. You know, that's, uh, you know, that's 600 miles, I think it was. 600 miles is what the instructions say. Uh, that's, you know, for me, that's, you know, that's a month, month and a half. Uh, the front paddle batteries, it uses those little round 20, 30, 20, 32R batteries, or whatever they are. Uh, they're supposed to last six to twelve months. That's a long time. Probably not going to need to replace those for a while. Um, another little up, other little things that I found interesting was that it comes with a software update, little uh, little dongle piece, and 
they don't really tell you what it's for. They don't really tell you how it works. Uh, I've yet to see any, any video on YouTube or anywhere else where they tell you how it works or where, where you plug it in. I know you plug it into your computer and I, I've loaded the software that it says to do, but how does it translate to the components? I, I have no idea. I'm, I'm assuming wireless. I don't know. I don't see anywhere in the instructions says where you can plug in a USB to these things. Uh, so I'm assuming it's wireless. How that works, I, I don't know. There's nothing in the instructions that I could find that says once you've got an update, here's how you update your derailers or your shifters. I don't know. Maybe there is something on the shifters. I, I didn't see any instructions. They're very minimal instructions come with these things. It just basically tells you how they work and how to install them, and, and uh, that's about it. So maybe SRAM or SRAM, however you want to pronounce it, maybe they're going to come out with some sort of situation in the future where it's going to give you more intel uh, on these things. But uh, for the moment, don't expect too much as far as, uh, you know, instructions and, uh, and help. I mean, a lot of the bike shops that I called to get some more info on, they, they had no clue. Even Performance Bike that I bought these from, I called their tech line. The guy says, oh, we just, you know, they're just getting the stuff in now. They're just themselves using it and trying to figure out how it all works. And so don't expect too much as far as support goes. Uh, you know, maybe get people at some of the bike shops to give you an S somebody at SRAM to call and uh, talk to them about it. Uh, but I, I didn't find that to be too easy. So that being said, uh, if I were to rate this out of 10, easy nine and a half, nine and three quarters out of 10. Shifting is amazing on it. Uh, you know, the build quality looks good. Uh, front derailleur is a little noisy, but when you're out on the road, I almost didn't hear it. You know, when you're, you know, when you're in your garage working with it, it's, you know, it's got a, it's got a sound to it, as you heard. Uh, I didn't find that to be a big issue. I could care less. Uh, the rear derailleur is super quiet, super smooth. Goes into every gear, super easy. Set this up over here. Maybe we can get you a little test. I can show you how well this thing does shift. Uh, give me a second here. So we'll just a uh, couple quick shifts. And you can hold the paddles down and they'll it'll just continuously shift all the way up. See? All the way up. All the way down. So pretty good. I don't have any issues with it. It's been great. So this is my review of the SRAM ETAP. I uh, hope you find this uh, useful. If you have any comments or uh, concerns, uh, please post them in the comments section. Uh, any tips for me or any things I did wrong or anything that you want to dispute that I've uh, said here, please post them. Like I said, I'm just learning the system too, and uh, I could use any help, any tips.